What you guys got another video here for you on Ubuntu on Windows 10 with WSL2 and we're going to be showing you how to set all this up and get the GUI interface working on localhost uh, as well. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure you're running the very latest version of Windows and that will be Microsoft Windows version 2004. This is their very latest version and if you're not running this version then it's not going to work on your system okay so next off we're going to go down to the bottom here and we're going to type windows features now when you do that you'll see up the top turn windows features on or off click on here and you can see this is the windows features box we need to enable a couple of features here for this to work properly so the first one we're going to enable is the virtual machine platform and then a windows subsystem for linux now you can install these via the command line if you want to the two commands are on the screen i'll leave the links all in the video description for you for all this sort of stuff so you can just copy and paste and follow along so you can see here that's now going ahead and installing those windows features on our system so just let that do its thing it does take a bit of time so be patient and once that applies those changes it will ask you to reboot your system and uh, once you reboot your system it's going to start doing some configurations and windows updates you'll see a window screen looking something like this and it will reboot a couple of times once that is done you will be back at the desktop you can then open up the uh, windows store and then go in here and type in ubuntu I'm going to be installing Ubuntu on this one, but you can do pretty much whatever version of Linux inside here that you want to do. So I'm going to do Ubuntu here, and we're going to be doing the latest version, which is 20.04 LTS. That's the one we're going to go for. So click on this one here, and you will see free, and click on the get sign. Click on that one, and it will start to get this and download it and install it on your system. So this will then go off and get that file and download it. It does take a bit of time. As you can see here, we've got 400 odd megabytes of size. So depending on the size you will drive, will determine how much space this is going to use up. So we're going to download this and get this installed. So let that come down. And once we've got this, we can do a couple of more commands to get this all set up. And I'll show you how to do those. Once that's down, you should see launch. Click on launch and this will open up this uh, box here. So this is our Ubuntu here. So next, what we need to do is let it configure it for us. It will take a bit of time. It's just installing. It takes a few minutes. And once we've got this done, we will be able to create our username and password. So that is the next thing that we're going to do. So let's create our username. Now, you don't have to use the same username as Windows. So you can give it whatever unique username that you want. So it says enter new Unix username. So I'm going to put Brightech in here. Push enter. Give it a password. Now you can create whatever password you like. So I'm going to put this one in here. Now you won't see no text coming up on the screen or any dots like that. It just gives you a blank space there and it'll ask you to retype that password what you've just done and once we've done this it will move on to the next set so you go it's coming down here now so there we are so now we're all configured and ready to go we've got our username and password next up what we need to do here is move on to the next step which is go down and open up PowerShell so just type PowerShell and then run as administrator and this will open up the PowerShell for us. So let me just do this. So what I'm going to do here is going to try to set the default for WSL2 and see whether we can move on to the next step. So let me just type this in here and you can see here WSL2 requires an update uh, to its kernel component. So what I need to do here is go to that link. You can see the link up the top and it's saying please visit this link. So I'm going to copy this link and then open up a, a browser and then go here and you can see here download Linux kernel update package. So just download that. It's not a big download, it's only about 14 meg or something like that. Just download this and you should see this box popping up now. And uh, we're going to do this install here. So let me go ahead and quickly install this. 
Now it may want to close down Ubuntu in the background, but it will let me know whether it needs to do that. So let me just go ahead and install this. Okay, click finish. Okay, so that's now done. So what we want to do next is move on to the next stage, which is going to type a, a couple of commands inside here. So let's go into the PowerShell box here again. Go WSL dash L and then space dash V. And it tells us what version we're running. We're, we're running version one and we want to be running version two. So we need to change that option. So what we can do here is type in this command here and this will change it to version two. So type in this WSL and then space dash dash set and then dash version and then space and then type the version of Linux that you're using. In my case, it was Ubuntu dash 20.04 and then space and then two. That is the version that we want to run. It's going to take a few minutes to to do the conversion. So let that run. And uh, this will then take its time to convert. It will tell you when it's completed. So I'm just going to let that finish. There we go. Conversion completed. So now we should be running version two. So let's just see by typing WSL space dash L space dash V. And it's now telling us that we are running version two of WSL two. So that's good. So let's go ahead and set this as default here. So I just want to set this by doing WSL space dash dash set dash default dash version space two. And this will let us know that we are running at that as a default. OK, so that's good. So we've got that all going. So let's go ahead and move on to the next stage. So I've got the Ubuntu back open again and what we're going to do is do an update and upgrade of it here. So just type that command in that you see there. I'll leave the information in the video description for you and then you need to put in your password and I've done that wrong. So let me just type that again and then put that in and you should see a load of text coming up on the screen. Don't worry about that. That's just updating everything here. So just let that run through. And there's a, quite a bit of it. You can see the progress down the bottom there. So just let that update. Now, Microsoft haven't released a GUI interface for this just yet, but they will be in the near future. Uh, probably around the end of the year, you should see a GUI interface available for this. But at the moment, there isn't one. But there is a workaround that I found online and uh, they've got all the commands there, which I'll leave a link to in the video description, which you can run. And of course, this will help you get the GUI interface running on it via RDP. So we're going to get this all set up here. And to do that, we need to type the commands that you're seeing on here. I'll leave all these in the video description. So you just copy and paste them. Um, so let's go ahead and type sudo space apt space install and then space dash y and then xrdp. And that will start to download that and install it. OK, it does take a bit of time. So let that come down and install. And this is the only way we can get this working at the moment. And again, once you get this up and running, it will blow your mind how useful this can be. It's pretty, pretty cool to think this is all happening inside of Windows 10. And, uh, you know, it wasn't so long ago, Microsoft had a real hate relationship with Linux and now all of a sudden it's implementing a lot of its technology there so let's let that install and uh, that shouldn't take too long and I don't want to skip any parts here because I want you to be able to see the full process so once this is completed we'll be able to install a lightweight graphic user interface on here so that's what we're going to be doing next. And that's what we're going to be doing by typing in this next command here. And this will give us a lightweight graphic user interface. I'm going to choose the top option and uh, push enter. And uh, once that's done, that will select that version there. That does take a bit of time to get this installed. So let it all come down and install. And uh, you can see the speed of it is pretty fast. 
and it's just amazing how this is all running inside here so now we've got that all done now we're going to be uh, installing some extra software so let's just do this next command here and we'll let that go and install some extra software on there again that's coming down and once that's done we can move on to the next bit which is the next command so we are now pretty much here we're just going to do some configuration changes here for uh, the actual RDP so let's just go ahead and do that so we'll make a backup of that RDP next we're going to change the uh, default port from 3389 to 3390 so we're going to let that go ahead and do that by typing in that command there and push enter next what we're going to do is change the resolution uh, so we get a better quality resolution and we need to put in this big command here and we're changing that so we're going to push enter and put that in there and then that should change the resolution so we get a better quality so we'll just let that um, change there I'm going to put this next command in and this is all to do with uh, your resolution so we're just going to paste this next one in here and push enter and that will then save there so now what we can do is save this all to X session. So let's go ahead and put that command in there and paste it in and push enter. And that will save it to X session. So next we need to uh, download Nano text editor so we can make changes to the startup script for the RDP startup script. So let's just go down. We need to go all the way down to the bottom. That's what it's telling me to do and go down here and put a little hash here and a space and the next one down needs to put a hash and a space and then we need to paste in this next part here so let me just go ahead and do that as well and um, we're just going to paste that in so there we go so that's in there and what we need to do now is uh, exit out here control X and this will uh, save it so we need to save this and it'll say do you want to save this say why for yes and we can then close this out by pressing enter and once that's done we should be back here and all we need to do now is start xrdp so we're going to start the rdp up so just type this command in here and push enter and that will start the remote desktop protocol server so that's now done so all we need to do now is go down to the search box and do a search for remote desktop software which is built into windows so you can see remote desktop connection click on that there and now we have our remote desktop connection now if you've disabled this you would have to re-enable it and uh, that's now done so we can now do localhost colon 3390 that's what we set that port to it will then give you this here which you will need to agree to which means it's a connection uh, from an unknown source so just say yes and again what we need to do now is put in our username and our password which we set up for Ubuntu so put that inside there and once you put that inside there and click OK it will connect and you should now see a connection and that is it there that may look a little bit different there because we did use that lightweight GUI uh, so you can see we've got a GUI interface here you've got all your stuff here working so what you want to do once you've got this working now you can do whatever you like from here um, you will need to fix the browser let me just show you down here because apparently that doesn't work and you need to install a browser so let's go ahead and put Firefox on so when clicking on the little world thing here you will get an error message and uh, what we need to do here is open up a terminal and we need to paste in this command here or type it in whatever you want to do uh, so just type this in sudo space at space install space firefox and push enter and then enter your password and then push enter again and that will download and install firefox it's 211 megabytes so that will come down and then start to install it does take a bit of time but once that's done we should then have internet access inside here and it should be working so let's go ahead and uh, test that again by clicking on this and there you go it's now working 
so you're up and running so you should be able to uh, have a play with this and uh, let me know what you think of it I think it's pretty cool now a really good useful YouTube channel to follow for this sort of stuff is a uh, David Bombal. I've got a lot of useful information from him on how to set this up so a big thank you to him for leaving all of the information in the uh, comments section he listed it all out which made it an absolute breeze to set this up in fact i'll leave a link for david's channel in the video description so you can check his channel out pretty decent uh, channel a really cool guy anyway i think i'm going to end this one here my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk have a great weekend guys and i shall see you again for another video real soon thanks again dave bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.